In this video, we're going to look at using network cable testers. Network cable testers are maybe one of the most important uh, analyzing tools that a, an IT technician or anyone that's supporting networks can use. Uh, they can range from very simple to very expensive, and but often when you have a lot of cable and network runs, you want to make sure that they're verified and not just verified for what's called continuity. So you can see here a little pass that shows things like near and crosstalk and uh, wire mapping. So we're going to look at uh, a couple different types of cable testers that you could buy. You'll see the very simple cable tester here on the left hand side. You can buy that for anywhere from $30 to $50. And it basically just does what's called a wire map. It will tell if uh, cable number one on one end of the cable is connected to cable, uh, the same pin on the other end of the cable. And as I say, it's very cheap. And you can go to another type of cable tester, Fluke, or one company that makes uh, a lot of network cable testers, uh, for upwards of $1,000 for a kit of different uh, types of parts. Just the tester by itself is probably five or $600. So why would you pay more uh, for something like a Fluke cable tester? Well, the Fluke cable tester will test uh, RJ11, so it'll test for telephone. Uh, it can test for POTS voltage. Uh, POTS stands for plain old telephone system. And uh, this is uh, the older style analog telephone. It can tell you if that type of voltage is there, which could damage some equipment. The RJ45 is typically the Ethernet standard we'll use. And this one can also do coax and some cable uh, TV types of voltages. This cable tester does not do fiber. Fiber cable testers are again another probably $500 to $1,000 more than these types of cable testers. This one can also do toning. So if you have um, say 50 cables in a bundle and they're all uh, wrapped together, they're not always labeled on either end, you can tone one end, one cable at one end and have a what's called a tone probe on another end and you can pick out which cable um, uh, from a bundle of 50 that you want to uh, investigate. So that's really handy when there's a lot of cables in a bundle that are running a long distance. TDR, something stands for time domain reflectometry and built into the fluke cable testers are cable testers sort of, of that cost this much is the ability to tell if there's a break how far along that cable is it. Sometimes it may not be possible to replace a long cable run in a building. A TDR can tell you exactly how long it is to a fault. Split pairs. Um, we've talked about split pairs in previous, uh, previous tutorials. Um, the EIA TIA standard defines which um, colored pairs go on which pins. And it's very important for keeping uh, interference down and getting the maximum length out of your cable. If you don't adhere to that, um, uh, that standard, you can get something called a split pair. And although the continuity is the same end to end, that is pin 1 is connected to pin 1 on the cable, pin 2 to 2, and so on, 8 to 8, if you have a split pair, you may get so much interference that uh, a 100 meter cable may not work properly. Near end and far end crosstalk uh, are also measured by these types of cable testers, which can help uh, identify any network cable problems that you're having in your network. Now one of the worst problems you can have in a network is that your network is intermittent. It fails but maybe only 1% of the time. And sometimes that can be due to uh, bad cables, especially if you've made them yourself or if they've been crimped in some way. Maybe they go around desks and, uh, and uh, a desk leg has a, a crushed part of the cable or if they've gone overhead someone has uh, tie wrapped them too tightly. Um, so those can cause intermittent cable uh, problems and you can really only pick those up with the more expensive cable testers. So for any IT technician, I would recommend your company invest in a good cable tester. Really, really important. So we're going to look at a video of a cable tester in action. 
we're going to use two different style of Fluke cable testers and the first one we're going to use is a Fluke 620 LAN cable meter which is an older style probably we've got this about five years ago and it comes or you can buy some accessories which are little plugs at the end each with a number which can help you uh, identify uh, wiring errors in cables so we're just going to put this to test we don't have a cable so it certainly will identify that very quickly and one thing that's very important is you want to make sure that the cables that you're inserting into the end of it are properly made if you haven't if you've made these cables yourself, if there's any flaw in the end, you can damage the end that uh, goes into the cable tester. Now this is a, a little device for um, attaching one of those uh, cable ID tags to the end of the cable. And if we put this on test, this cable, it will pick up that tag and it will identify that cable ID number two you heard the little beep that meant that you got uh, a successful cable will tell the length using TDR and there you have a wire map which shows all the pins on each end being connected so that's a good properly tested cable now we're going to test a different type of cable with a different cable tester and this is a Fluke Microscanner 2. It's one of the newer ones for um, for testing copper cables. It has toning capability. Right now there's no cable in it. But it gives you a little more visual feedback. We're going to test a yellow cable and this is actually a crossover cable. Now you typically don't need crossover cables anymore. Most connectors on computers and switches are auto sensing and can change their connection. And you'll see this cable tester has this little plug at the end. So we actually don't need one of those ID tags. We can plug it just into a little cap that comes with the tester. That's very convenient. See it has a coax and an RJ45. And if we look at what it's telling us, it's telling us that 1 and 2 and 3 and 6 are crossed. Now it's identifying that as a potential error, but really that's proper for uh, a Cat5 crossover cable. So that cable is also properly wired as a Cat5 crossover cable. And we would use that crossover cable with older style switches that may not have auto sensing or auto wiring ports. Especially if you have some old hubs around, you're still using hubs. Now we have a, a cable that was made by a student which has a plug and a connector on each end. This might go into a wall plate. And now we're going to test this, but notice we have a different style of ID tag. This is the one which came with the micro scanner. It will not work with the Fluke 620, the first one, so you've got to make sure you get the right ID tags. And that ID tag was number three. Oops. And you can see we've got a wiring error. In the second pair, six and three are reversed. So this is a bad cable. It does pick up the ID, but does show there's a wiring error with that cable. So that would not be serviceable. We would have to find out where the wiring error is made and we would have to. Now this is the other ID. You'll notice there are two different IDs. One for the micro scanner in the bottom, one for the Fluke 620 in the top. So we're also going to test this with the Fluke 620 just so we can show you what you can expect. We'll go to test. and you'll get a little beep that says it's miswired. It does pick up ID2. The wire map there will show you what the error in the wiring is.
Our next test is a long cable and it is made so that the pin 1 is connected to pin 1 but it does not adhere to the TIA standards for CAT5 cable. So electrically it is fine and I've had uh, technicians from some companies come in and not worry about the TIA standard. They simply just wired end to end uh, as long as the continuity was correct. But this tester will pick up that there is a split pair. It's not wired properly according to the TIA standard. And the split pair is between wires 3 and 4 and 5 and 6. So 1 will go to 1, 2 will go to 2, 3 will go to 3 and so on but it doesn't adhere to the way the wires the color codes need to be inside the connector and that can cause interference errors in long cables. Now you can't pick up split pairs with short cables that's why this cable is longer. So if you've got a split pair in a two foot cable you can probably get away with it. Now notice here you see the little word split in the triangle at the left hand side and it will show you the split pairs are between 3 and 6, 4 and 5. The middle two pairs are and our cable 14 foot long. So what we've done here is we've measured uh, a split pair, we've measured uh, something that had a bad connection, uh, we've measured good cables, and we've used a couple different uh, IDs, uh, types of tags that are available with these types of units. The final cable we'll measure is one which was just pretty well made at random. It's going to have all kinds of errors on it. And as I say, make sure that there's nothing wrong with your connector so you don't damage the end of that tester. If you damage it, that will be an expensive replacement. And when you see something like that, usually your cable's not attached really well. You're seeing the pins on one end, but no pin numbers on the other end. So there we go. And we've got all kinds of miswires on that. So that's a little bit about cable testers. Uh, as part of your lab, you'll be using uh, cable testers to test a variety of cables.